Today in the garage, live from CES 2024, Plastic Omium. Let's go. Welcome to The Garage. Today we're recording another episode live at the Consumer Electronics Show 2024 in Las Vegas. Today our guest is from Plasticomium. We're pleased to welcome Alexandre Courjean, EVP of Innovation and Software. Alexandre, welcome to The Garage. Welcome, John. I will be very glad to be here today with you. Thanks. I'm so excited to welcome you. We've been working together and I look forward to talking about that. But let's start by introducing you to the audience. Tell us a little bit about you. So um, I'm Alexandre Courgeon. As you said, I'm EVP for Innovation and Software at Plasticomium. I start my career in research first. Mm -hmm. Then I joined a, a big aircraft manufacturer, Airbus, oh, nice. during 14 years. And then the alliance Renault-Nissan, starting in automotive and discovering a totally new world. Interesting. I have joined Plasticomium two years and a half ago. Uh -huh. And uh, this job is quite exciting because it gives me the chance to work with Sonatus. <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you to say, but, but you're, it's, you're to be such a great partner and we're going we're gonna to get into that. Tell us a little bit about your role and what your scope of responsibility is. In fact, there is two types of roles. The innovation part, it's um, coordinating at the level of the corporate, mm -hmm. all innovation, having team in different divisions of plastic commune. Mm -hmm. So we are here to try to make synergies across the innovation, but yeah. also to bring new topics that can enrich the portfolio of Plastic Amium. Mm -hmm. And the other side, we have created an entity dedicated to software, because mm -hmm. software is becoming so important in automotive, yeah. which is called OpenSoft. And the goal of this entity, first, is to develop software for all the products of Plastic Amium. Right. But afterwards, the ambition is really to go towards software as a product and having pure software sales, okay. and having a new stream of uh, growth for Plasticomium. Yeah, very good, very good. And for our viewers who may not be familiar with, with Plasticomium, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your key products and your key, your key uh, focus areas? So Plasticomium was created just after the Second World War, and the idea is in the name, bringing plastic parts okay. to lightweight the vehicles. Okay. But from that, the portfolio has totally changed. We have now five divisions, one which is dealing with lighting, so really bringing uh, visibility to, to the vehicle, mm -hmm. one uh, dealing with the exterior part, still in plastic, okay. one with the front-end module, mm -hmm. so the first part of the car, right. a division on clean energy system, where oh, we right. are doing fuel tanks, but also uh, battery, EV, uh, pack, and also electronic, which is related to that. Mm -hmm. And the last one is new energy, where we are delivering uh, product for the hydrogen, high pressure vessel for the storage of hydrogen and fuel cell system to produce from this hydrogen, which is stored in the vessel, electricity to power a car. That's fantastic. That's quite a wide range. And we're going to get into some of those topics. I also, before we get too far into the meat of our discussion, yeah. we always <laughs> like to begin our conversation to get to know our guests. And I, I always ask my guests to tell us something fun, something interesting about you. So what's something interesting about you you can share with our guests? Uh, I think Perhaps something which is really funny. Uh, I'm married, but that's normal. I would yeah, say not yeah. funny. I have two childs. That's yeah, yeah. not funny as well. But now I have a third uh, baby d'amour, uh -huh. as we say in France. Uh -huh. is my dog. Uh -huh. In fact, it's not a dog. He's a golden retriever, so he's my uh, third child. Golden retrievers uh, think they're people. Yes, they're, okay. they're convinced they're people. <laughs> and sometimes I'm convinced too. <laughs> well, I, I always uh, promise to, to, to meet my guests by telling them a fun fact about me. And so we have, um, I've always wanted a dog, but my lifestyle doesn't support a dog. So we have a cat. But um, actually, we're about to get our second cat. Wow. <laughs> so actually, the cat has been born and it's now with its mommy. And we're waiting for it to get, they usually give you about 12 weeks, I think they leave their mom. So mm. in, in late in February, we're getting our second cat. So we're we'll very be, excited. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's so uh, perhaps I would have a second dog. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, could be. Really yes. I think I think two cats is less work than two dogs. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. All right, so let's get into the conversation, and um, maybe we can start by uh, getting a sense of what are some of the things you're seeing, both in the industry, perhaps, and in the in the show. What's exciting topics you're seeing right now? Perhaps in, in the industry first. I think we. Um, well, the evolution of the aut automotive uh, industry has been continuous the, yeah. since the beginning, but. Currently, we are really a turning point where we see first the, uh, the real growth of EV vehicle, right. which is also disrupting the market in terms of who is the leader in this market. And yeah. we see the 
I would call them not uh, critically the traditional OEM are uh -huh. losing ground in this domain. Yeah. And also the software appearance in the vehicle, and everyone yeah. is talking about software sure. defined vehicle, sure. but it's becoming a reality. Yeah, it's, it's right. We've had a number of guests this week, and we've talked about how software defined vehicle has been a kind of a buzzword for a mm. while. And I feel like little by little, it's now beginning to be real. We're showing off a number of demonstrations, including one with you. We'll talk about yeah. a little later where we're, we're using software to do really, I think, incredible innovation. But it feels like the software is becoming more real now in vehicles. Of course, software has been in vehicles for a long time, yes, but, but it's been buried mm -hmm. and embedded. And now it's becoming more on the surface, I think. I feel I'm looking to my own history. In fact, we started the software defined vehicle in 2016. Right. And in fact, the, the main idea, we were looking to the architecture of the vehicle, right. which was with too many uh, controller units. And in fact, it was very difficult to pass information from one to the other. Right. And the idea was really to have some kind of full virtualization of the car, right. like in the IT department. Right. But in fact, we, we move a bit uh, from this idea and going for this HPC, uh, high performance computing. Sure. And I think it's mandatory because for, from the user point of view, you are expecting that your car is evolving, which is, can be transformed continuously. Right. And having this uh, big computer, it makes life easy to combine functions, right. to upgrade them, right. and to deliver something which is new for the consumer. Right. And everything has software now. Yeah. Your coffee machine, I'm sure. Sure, sure. The watch. Yeah, uh, I don't have a yeah. nice watch. Or my my, my coffee watch. machine tells me it has ready for a software update. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, in fact, it's totally crazy because yeah. few years ago we have not imagined that the coffee machine will be more smart than us. Yeah, my coffee machine. Uh, I have an espresso. I'm a big fan. My coffee machine it reads barcodes, right? Mm. And it says, ah, for this pellet, I need to spin at this speed. But yeah. this pellet is different. <laughs> so I have to spin at a different speed. So uh, it's it's very true. But coming back to to cars, I, you know, we definitely see this consolidation, and we see uh, the the coexistence of multiple mm. uh, applications, multiple functions side by side as one of the. I think for me, one of the critical defining factors of a software defined vehicle because. A hardware, we, we also said a hardware defined vehicle is this block does this, this block mm. does that, and that's that. But as soon as you have multiple things in one block, well, then all of a sudden they have to, to coexist. Yeah. Not unlike data center. You yeah, know? in fact, exactly the same. And yeah. I know that Sonatus has a lot of experience in data yeah. center. And I think it's uh, the white right bridge with what is happening in the car because yeah. the technology was existing in other domain. Yeah. It has to be uh, adapted to the vehicle because there is notion of safety, notion of uh, right. cyber security right. that are very critical because there are people moving inside. Yeah. So we need to be sh sure that they will be transported uh, right. without, um, let's say, additional safety issue. That's right. And so it's, it's what makes difference with the, the car compared yeah. to other industry. Yeah, and you know, you talked about this consolidation, and, and I think this idea of central compute is it's kind of a journey mm. because it's not like we, we binary, we flip a bit, and all of a sudden we have a big server in the trunk, and that's that, and we're done because it's not like that. Because, first, as you say, automotive applications don't lend themselves that mm. you, need, you need to be safety aware, you need to be aware of mixed criticality. Some s systems are safety critical, yeah. some systems are not. Also, there's physical wiring in mm. cars. You know, the, the zonal architecture is one of the trends that we see is, is coming um, to providing a lot of value. Simplifying, you know, simplifying and lighting, lightening, reducing the weight, I should yeah. say, of the wires in the car, uh, having local runs. It's also allowing us to bring things like automotive ethernet mm. and more modern networking technologies because those are critical to being able to deliver new capabilities post-production. Yeah. Sure, because in fact, we need to update the car. I think today people are used to have a product which is evolving with their own right. willingness. And I think we need to bring automotive, which is one of the major objects they are using, yeah. in the same mode. Yeah. I think what we, I want to come back on the Ethernet because it's for sure it's not sure. exactly the same ones that we have in the That's right. in, at home because it has to be timestamp. That's right. Ethernet time time because, sensitive networking, exactly. Because you need to be secure that the information that you receive is the proper one because That's you right. cannot ask to break when there is no need of breaking. That's right. Uh, and you need also to secure that you break when it's needed. But you saw also what we see with software defined vehicles in the architecture, we see also a new way of managing the transfer of energy yeah. between the different computing. Right. And with a smart, uh, let's say, uh, control switch which are also enabling to improve the efficiency of the, the network right. and the efficiency of energy consumption inside the, yeah. the vehicle. Yeah, you talked about the, the network. Indeed, you're right. The network standards are, are quite different. Time-sensitive networking has the ability to, to have, for example, quality of service, mm. 
which is crucial. If you're sharing a link with, let's say, video traffic, let's say, entertainment traffic, but also mission critical systems, historically those have been partitioned, and you know maybe even today's vehicles have those partitioned. But the goal is that they can share a link and using protocols to give priority to the safety critical systems. Exactly. You also mentioned cybersecurity. I know that's a critical aspect. We need to make sure that vehicles are safe, especially because they're you know many thousands of pounds and many thousands of kilograms moving down the road, mm-hmm. and we want to make sure that. Um, they're, they're reliable. So cybersecurity is, is an important pr- priority for you, I think. Yes, uh, because in fact, we, we cannot consider that any part of the vehicle is protected. You can say, okay, I'm delivering, for example, a battery management system, it's isolated, yeah. there is no risk. Or the lighting, yeah. you see what happened in the yeah. US, yeah. there was people, uh, let's say, dismounting a bit a uh, uh, headlamp, uh-huh. And uh, abusing the can uh, the can network, and they were able afterwards to steal the vehicle. So yeah. every part, yeah. as the vehicle is more and more connected, has to be protected. So there is several layers of protection normally in a car, but yeah. also us as a supplier of technology, we need to be sure that what we are delivering yeah. is really uh, protected right. and cannot be attacked easily. Right. It's interesting you mentioned because a few years back, maybe it was five years ago, we had a big denial of service attack, we called DDoS attack, mm. from webcams. Mm. There was a webcam that was a very popular webcam, and there was some vulnerability, and some hacker put in malware in many, many webcams, and they all streamed to the internet at the same time and brought the internet down. Yeah. And I think if we take to your car analogy, if we take an analogy to a castle, uh, like the old movies and stuff, it used to be you have a big wall outside mm. the castle to keep people out. But the problem is that doesn't work. No, <laughs> because you, you need to have walls in effectively every different subsystem. Mm. So no subsystem can corrupt an adjacent subsystem either. Yeah. Um, kind of walls inside the house mm. to protect things, and that's how cybersecurity is structured these days, and it's critical. Exactly. Yeah. So we would we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the demonstration we're doing yeah. together at CS. It's it's been so popular out on the show. I can look across and see it right now. It's so popular. So just to briefly for our viewers, and what we'll do is we'll put a little inset video to get people uh, a vision of what this looks like. We have a product called Sonatus Automator we're really proud of. It allows us to deploy feature on demand capabilities and um, and, and have actions take place in certain situations. And, and Plasticomium has delivered this incredible uh, lighting fixture. In this case, it's a rear lighting fixture, but you also do a similar thing with front lights. Yes. Where there's some um, an LED display grid. And what we're showing in our in our demo, you know this, but for our viewers, is we're showing how we can dynamically activate, for example, situationally aware, mm-hmm. like when there's pedestrians or when there's a, a construction or other things, a proactive safety warnings yep. to the driver behind. Uh, and and people who watch this, they're just blown away because, of course, the light's fantastic. It's a very cool light. But even more powerful is the combination of our two mm-hmm. technologies to activate it to do things. So what, what's been the reaction on your side as well? It's the same because we have the same in our booth right. in Las Vegas and everyone is amazed by this uh, scenario that has been brought. I think it's really depicting the interest of uh, both obviously the lighting, right. but how lighting is in, can bring safety uh, yeah. features Value add. and how yeah. to uh, your automator yeah. by combining existing function in the car can bring more value yeah for the, the user, but also obviously for the yeah. OEM, which is uh, impacting that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact that you can use either the signal or detection made by a camera right. Right. or by the radar, right. as it is depicted in, the, yeah. in this scenario, it's, it's great for me because in fact, you have a rear lamp, which is already smart, right. because you, have, you can have a display, yeah. but instead of uh, providing, um, let's say, a fun message right. or whatever, or nice picture, you bring a, a really useful function uh, to the user, which is protecting him in the yeah. sense that you bring information yeah. and you network with the, the cars that are behind. So Absolutely. very great and yeah. everyone is reacting and, very and, positively to and, this. And, and I've been telling, I've been giving this demo all week long mm-hmm. and I'm so excited to give it. And, and I've explained to people how often, and everyone says, oh yeah, that's true. How often you kind of are upset at the car in front of you because you, why did the car in front of you stop? Yeah. 
because you can't, sometimes you can't see the pedestrian. Mm. And so in this case, if a driver is following too closely, how can we provide some proactive warning says that the driver in front, he might be stopping suddenly because there's a pedestrian you can't see. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, that's true. Yeah. And also I should say, and even though we're not demonstrating it here because it requires some physical space, you have a front facing light as well that provides some digital light patterns as well. And, and that's also really compelling because it helps the driver of this vehicle to have an alert provided to them in a kind of a heads up fashion yeah. to hazards in front of them that they that the car may see, the radar may see, but they don't see yet. Exactly. In fact, you, you really bring all the value of the sensors that are installed in the vehicle yeah. to combine their functions right. and to deliver something which, which was not planned. It's that's uh, right. the very good definition of system. It, it's, but right. It's, uh, that's right. it's very nice to see that. And what is also cool, and I will make uh, I make some too much publicity for your automator. No, thank you. But it's nice is that you don't need to uh, to be uh, with high performance computing. Yeah, you can uh, retro uh, fit in fact yeah. ex existing car yeah. and bring this function in uh, to many people, which is uh, important for the safety. I, I think what's exciting about the technology and these kind of solutions we're bringing is there's so much of this information that's already there. Mm. I was and when I explained this demo, this is the way, one way I explain it is that the ADAS system, uh, the driver assistance systems by law in many countries, I'm sure it's in the EU, I know it's in the US, modern cars must have automatic emergency braking yeah. by law now in new, new cars. And so the car already has to detect pedestrians, mm. but that information is currently being squirreled away only inside the ADAS system. How do we take advantage of this knowledge the car already has to do additional value creating things. That's why I think this lighting example is so fun. Uh, very nice. Yeah. In fact, for me, it's also cool to see that you can always, because safety on the on the road, I know there's a lot of uh, people and during, yeah. injured or even, let's say, uh, yeah. dead in, yeah, yeah. On, the, on the street. Yeah. You bring something which is, in fact, the ability yeah. uh, to explain what is happening yeah. in front of the car. Yeah. And, uh, far in advance compared to a human being can detect by himself. Yeah. I know we've, we've spoken about this, but the regulatory environment for mm. this is changing rapidly. Many countries in the EU, they have front patterns that are allowed. In, in, uh, in China, in some places, they're very, very, there's more yeah. things that are allowed. Even just the United States, which has perhaps been quite conservative, in California, very conservative, they just approved the specific lighting to indicate that vehicles are being driven in autonomous mode, which is very important yeah. because autonomous driving or self-driving vehicles act differently than human drivers. And so it's a warning, ah, this car may break differently or change lanes differently than you're expecting. So I personally see that this space is gonna be evolving very rapidly. Sure. And what's no, so nice to be able to work with you is that we can respond quickly to those changes in the regulatory environments very fast. Yeah, because we can, uh, we can add new feature, new yeah. message, new event that are detected to That's improve great. the, the function, so Fantastic. great. It's been a great demo. So looking forward to the future, what are, you mentioned some other uh, divisions, some other areas, yeah. what are you working on and what's your focus coming ahead? I think today, we one of the major focus for Plasticomium is hydrogen. Okay. We think that the, the world will not, not only rely on battery, yeah. because batteries uh, are existing, they are developing a very, yeah. Rapidly, yeah, but it requires but, a lot of infrastructure too. And they are also requiring some raw material that right. can be a, a subject of uh, how to, to get them, yeah. to, to manufacture the battery. Right. And I think we need also to offer people different uh, opportunity. Right. We, we are not used to a single source of energy in the right. car. Right. And I think we, we need to offer something different. So mm. we, we think that hydrogen will be one of the source of energy in the future. Mm. Uh, and that can be also a very uh, good energy uh, mm -hmm. for the, let's say, the sustainability yeah. deployment uh, for the planet. Yeah, it's m many people don't know much about hydrogen. It's it's still somewhat emerging and maybe people have opinions like the Hindenburg is up. It's not like that at all. It's a completely different world now. And hydrogen vehicles are both safe and quite efficient. And uh, I, I see where I live, uh, hydrogen uh, filling stations mm -hmm. becoming quite popular. I'm seeing a number of those in my in my area. And I think it's it's valuable to have a mixture, as you say, a mixture of sure. solutions. I think we need to, uh, some some kind of freedom to yeah. uh, to select what we prefer, yeah. because it will depend on the way you you behave. You you have to to use the your mobility uh, equipment in the future. Yeah. Second topic for me, obviously, is software. Yeah. Uh, so if we talk about it. Software is becoming more and more important. It's why we have created our uh, open soft right. within Plasticomium to serve the product, but also to, to prepare the future. That's right. I think software is really bringing a, a lot of value because in fact, you, you, 
you can continuously upgrade and the time to market of a modification is nothing comparable with the hardware modification. Right. And we were using automotive to be a, a bit slow. And I think what we had happened in the past with the smartphone is demonstrating that now we need to adapt. And the speed of uh, delivering things are, have to change. People are becoming more and more impatient. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to see. And I, I, I think so many companies are, are trying to figure out how can they bring software into the vehicle. And it sounds like you have a very good perspective on the requirements and yeah. the needs. Yeah. After, we have also modification and uh, we refer to Tesla. I don't want to make so, almost also to, to talk too much about it. But I think they are also disrupting the way the, the car are manufactured. Yeah. And in fact, the, we in Plastic Omnium are preparing also, uh, we are adapting mm -hmm. our offer to this new way of manufacturing car. And we really want to propose what we, did, we call integrated offer, right. bringing either a full front or full back of the car right. to, to, in some sense, to speed up the wow. final assembly of the car, which is very costly. And today, we have the chance to be everywhere in the world where people are assembling the car because we are already used to, to deliver just right. in sequence right. our product. And I think we are well positioned to, to bring this also new way of manufacturing cars uh, to the public. We were also talking about the change in how mobility is being deployed today. It's mainly, mainly private car ownership, mm -hmm. but we're seeing a change in how that is with ride sharing and things like that. What's your, what's your take on that? I think you are fully right in some sense. We were really coming from an um, industry which is product-based yeah. industry. And we are moving towards usage-based oh. product in some sense. And we see that the mobility for me will be something that you use when you need. It has to be adapted on the, the purpose that you have. If you have something, let's say, to, if you want to move mm -hmm. your, your home from one place to the other, you don't need the, the same cars on the one where you need to make 10 kilometers or 20 right. kilometers on a on daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I think we will come, and also the software will be a, an enabler for that, uh, towards something which is really usage-based. Right. In terms of industry, I see also for us, the, when you talk about user experience, it's also a buzzword, but this user experience was mainly handled by the car manufacturer. Right. We see now a bit of a shift uh, towards also the company like Plasticomium and our other technology provider to the car manufacturer. And we need also to think our product as a usage and try to put services on top of our product. Yeah, I see. So we can talk about enhanced product. What we are starting, we want to have initiative around digital twin, okay. because we will monitor during the manufacturing, uh, the design, manufacturing, and in-service part of our product, right. how it behaves, if it is corresponding to what we're expecting. Right. It can be also useful to uh, propose during the life of the, our product, right new functions or new services that will ease the understanding, right. the usage of this product. And maybe the reliability and, and things like that. That's exactly. Good. Well, listen, this has been a wide ranging conversation. I'm so glad to have you visit with us and we're so grateful for your partnership and the joint demonstration we're doing. And we look forward to, to, to working close with you in the future. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot for welcoming me. I was really appreciating to, to be here today. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe to see future episodes like this, both from the Consumer Electronics Show and others from our studio and season two of The Garage. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.